everyone, it's me, Alex, and we're here today at the Koachi Fuji and Wisteria Garden. Well, we're at the JR Yahata station. We're about to head to the Koachi Fuji and Gardens. We're going to get a taxi. There's a couple of ways that you can get there, but we're running a little bit late, so we're getting a taxi. So it's probably going to cost like $30 or something. Accessing the garden isn't straightforward. It's on the bottom island, so it's at least five hours from Tokyo on a bullet train. I recommend you stay overnight because otherwise that's one hell of a day trip. I'll put the instructions below to help you out. The main thing to remember is that it's best to get to the garden from the JR Yahata station. During the peak season, which this year was April 21st to May 8th, a shuttle bus runs between Yahata station and the garden. When you come out of the exit of the station, just turn left and you'll spot these signs. So you have to pay an admission fee. So we have to book because it's uh, like the high season. That just books you a guaranteed spot in the line. But then, depending on the bloom of the flowers, if they're in full bloom or partial bloom, they charge a different fee to enter. So it looks like, is it 1,500 yen each at the moment? So they're probably in full bloom. They probably look amazing. But apparently, if they're not blooming so well on that day, it'll be less, maybe like 500 yen. So you have to pay twice. It's a bit pricey, but it's worth it. <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but basically you have to buy the tickets in advance, you can buy them online, these will get you a guaranteed spot in the queue, but then you still have to pay at the entrance, and the fee is different every day, depending on the bloom of the flowers, so it might be an extra 10 or $15. It's amazing! There it is! It looks so beautiful! The garden opens at 8am in the morning and closes at 6 o'clock at night during the wisteria season. So the wisteria season runs from mid-April to mid-May. And I can't stress to you enough, you cannot buy tickets at the entrance during the peak season. If it's outside of peak season then you can, but just check online before you visit, you'll have to pick up the tickets before you go. You can buy them online from a couple of different tourism websites, and you can also pick them up at 7-Eleven or Family Mart, but the way that you buy them there is actually through a ticket machine, but it's all written in Japanese and it's very, very hard to read. So just book your tickets before you even visit Japan. Just buy them in advance a couple of weeks out from an English-speaking website. So amazing. This is probably the most beautiful place I've ever seen. The garden's most famous feature is the two roughly 100 meter long tunnels made of wisteria trees. But aside from the two tunnels, there's also a huge collection of wisteria trees that form an enormous canopy of drooping flowers. There's a lot of different varieties of wisteria growing in this canopy, so some sections will create a gradient fade from pink to purple. This just in, Instagrammers around the world are quaking. I'm not kidding. That was honestly one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. This dude here represents my constant mood. That's me when I'm tired of being screamed at by Archie all day. If you can pull yourself away from the aesthetic backdrop of the Wisteria Garden down below, there's a really, really nice lookout up here. You can't really see the Wisteria, but you can see the top of them, and it's really beautiful. There's also a bamboo grove down there too that's very famous as well. So this is a really nice place to stop and have a picnic. Behind me is the top of that amazing canopy that just stretches on and on and on. There's hundreds of people down there, but you can't see. It just looks like you could walk on top of it. It's so amazing, it's so dense. Like I said before, the garden opens at 8 a.m. So if you can get out of bed early, if you're not like me and you don't sleep in until 1 p.m., if you, if you get there early, then you can appreciate this place in all its glory and there wouldn't be very many tourists around yet because a lot of the tourists have a long way to travel. So stay nearby, get there early. So we've come up to the very top of the garden. If you follow the maple trees, there's a pathway that brings you up here. There's not that many people up here, but it's a really nice spot to have a picnic. Dan and I did a bit of shopping at the supermarket before we came and we got some salad and some lollies and drinks. So we're going to sit up here in the sunlight for a little while. Anyone remember this little bag from my Japan haul? Hard to believe it was only a dollar. Ladies, get yourself a man that isn't afraid to carry a My Melody shopping bag around in public. So for our little picnic, we picked up some grapes all the way from Australia, you know, so we can enjoy a little bit of home with a side of pesticides. We picked up this blonde chocolate pocky, which wasn't just delicious, but also very practical. You'll find out why in a minute. 
We also picked up Peach Suntory, which is like alcoholic fizzy peach juice. This stuff goes for a dollar a can. We also got some soft boiled eggs because eggs taste uh, very good. I'm obsessed with corn salad. I buy it everywhere I go in Japan. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring chopsticks with me though. We also picked up some cheese because what else should two lactose intolerant people be devouring while they're on holidays? Smash that like button if you also ignore your allergies. And we also picked up an apple because a balanced diet is a piece of fruit in one hand and a box of pocky in the other. Alex is trying to do a thing. MacGyver. <laughs> uh, your finger's getting sticky. Not yet. <laughs> this place is honestly something straight out of a Ghibli film. I feel like Totoro could come waltzing out of those trees any second now, followed by the cat bus. <laughs> There's a lot of photo opportunities here, despite the huge crowds. I just placed my camera on one of the handrails and I was able to use the Wi-Fi feature to shoot remotely. I can do a tutorial about how I take myself portraits if you like. There's a lot you can do with a cheap camera and a self-timer. It also helps if you have a patient boyfriend as well. Don't forget to hang around until the end of the video to see a bunch of photos that I took while we were at the garden. It's the most beautiful place, it's honestly a photographer's paradise, and even if you're not a photographer, you can probably get some good selfies too. This is the greatest place in the world. So that was a really, really fun experience. The Kawachi Fujian garden was amazing. We went just before Golden Week, and if you don't know what Golden Week is, it is a very, very long public holiday where everyone in Japan goes on holidays and they crowd all the tourist destinations and you can't even move an inch. So we went a couple of days before Golden Week and it was still busy, but it wasn't too busy. We were able to get around. We couldn't get any photos with like a clear shot of the Wisteria Tunnel because there was too many people walking, but at least we could walk because apparently if you go in Golden Week, it's so packed, you're, you're just packed in like sardines and you can't even move. So I would definitely recommend not to go during Golden Week, but try and go just on the outside of it because that's when the wisteria's uh, in full bloom. The way that we got there, we got a train to, oh, what was it called? Yahata, the JR Yahata station. And then we got a taxi. We could have got a shuttle bus, but it goes once an hour and we missed it both there and back. So we got a taxi and Despite the taxi costing about $30 each way, I think it was totally worth it because that was one of the most beautiful experiences that I've ever had. I've never seen somewhere so beautiful and it smelled incredible and the view was perfect and I, I'll never forget it. So I think it's worth every cent. But if you are tight on your budget, you can definitely get the free shuttle bus. It goes to an onsen nearby and then you can just walk. So. I would also recommend doing that as well. Definitely add that one to your list if you're visiting Japan. It's totally worth the trip down to Kyushu. So Kyushu is this bottom island. So Tokyo is on Honshu, which is the main island. The top island where people go skiing, that's Hokkaido. This is the one of the bottom islands. This is Kyushu. There's also Shikoku, which is down even further south. It's funny, everywhere we go, people look at us and smile and like give us thumbs up and wave at us and stuff because I don't think that many foreigners make it down here or at least two foreigners with red hair that dress in pastel. I, I don't think that they make it down here very often because the amount of times that I've gotten on a train and there's been girls and they've been like, oh, kawaii, oh, kawaii, ah, and like waving at me and stuff. So it makes me feel very special. I like it down here. I like this island a lot. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the Kwachi Fujian garden and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Mwah.